Hello and welcome to our new video cast for the release 2104. My name is Venja Wölfing and today I'm going to present the most important news of our static analyzers as tray and rule checker. I will start with the news in Astray for C, followed by Astray for C++, and finish with the news about Rule Checker and the server. So let's get into it. The new compilation database imported tool of Astray allows to automatically extract the preprocessor configuration from a compile commands.json file as generated by modern build systems like for example CMake. It is available via the Tools menu and via the new batch mode option minus minus compilation database to DAX. Let me directly show it in the tool. I will set up an empty project in the desired analysis mode. In this example, a stream for C++, into which I will import the extracted preprocessor configuration. The compilation database importer can be found in the tools menu by clicking on tools, compilation database importer. And in the upcoming window, you can specify the .json file to be imported. When we click on load, we see the extracted configuration which can be imported into a .dax file or imported directly into the current analysis project. I will import it into the current project. Now you see that the files and preprocessor configuration have been imported into the project and we can preprocess and start the analysis. This is really convenient because it will save time when setting up the project that you can then spend on investigating the analysis results. Another great feature is that the annotations you add to the project are now directly shown in their exact location after insertion. Let me show it in Astray. Here we have a small project into which I will add some partition directives. I want to add one before the if statement and one behind it to close the partition again. As you can see, the annotations are directly shown after the insertion at their dedicated locations. Like this, you directly see whether you use the correct location for the insertion of the directive. When I save and rerun the project, they will be considered for the analysis. That's of course not all. Our AutoSAR converter got enhanced in the way that if your operating system configuration is split among multiple RxML files, they can now all be added to the preprocessor configuration. When clicking on the folder icon, you can choose the RxML files you want to add, and they are added to the list and are taken into account when starting the preprocessor. Astray now contains three new options. With the option Warner Memory Leaks, you'll get an alarm when the used memory is not freed before the termination of the program or when there is a non-terminating trace due to which the memory consumption grows indefinitely. With the options Global Iteration Limit and Global Iteration Limit per phase, you can have a bounded analysis in which you get incomplete results in shorter analysis time. I already prepared an example 
in which some of the memory has been freed, but not all of it. Here we reserve the memory of five pointers. In the following loop, we allocate five integer arrays. At the end, we free the array of pointers, but the memory we reserve in the loop is still allocated. So you see, we don't get an alarm for the freed memory, but for the memory allocation without a free, there is an alarm. The option for a global iteration limit can be found in the options view, in the astray options, in the section bounded analysis. You can shorten the analysis time to quickly find some alarms, but it is important to keep in mind that the results you will get when enabling this option might not be sound. We have some further improvements I want to show, since they can facilitate work with us tree and might lead to an even lower false alarm rate. We improve the precision of the interpolation domain. To show the effect of this improvement, I opened the Fuelsys example of target link. Via the AppSync menu, I generate the code And when this is done successfully, I invoke the S3 analysis. Choosing the newest build and clicking on Analyze, S3 opens with all the needed preprocessing information. We can directly click on Preprocess and start the analysis. As you can see, the interpolation domain is activated for this analysis. Now that the analysis run finished, we can look at the alarms we get. Here we see the alarm about an overflow in arithmetic and that the line that contains the alarm is colored red. When we now look at the functions of this file, we see that we have some interpolation function and table lookups. And when we click on them, we see that the code has been reached and that due to the interpolation domain, a tree could prove that there are no alarms at this location for this analysis. The last point I want to mention for us Dre for C today is that we significantly improve the analyzer performance on projects with concurrent processes and context insensitively analyzed functions. For context insensitive analysis, you now have the possibility to enforce or forbid functions to be analyzed context insensitively. You can also add a phase for the functions and enable or disable the heuristics. Let us now take a look at our new features for us tree for C++. The state machine domain is now also available for C++ analyses and can be used as you already know it from us tree for C. Additionally, we added stub implementations for standard library containers to support the efficient analysis of code that uses STL containers. In addition, the stubs detect incorrect usages of STL iterators. I will show you an example in the tool itself. A precondition of the usage is that you check the option use stubs for the standard libraries and use more abstract stubs for the C++ standard template library. I will pre-process and start the analysis and then we can take a look at our sample project. Here you can see that for this demonstration I used standard list, map and unordered set. In line 22 we try to dereference the iterator that points to the end of the list, which is not dereferenceable. As you can see, 
astray once about the attempt to dereference a non-dereferenceable iterator. The next alarm we get in line 27 is about incrementing a non-incrementable iterator. We decrement the end iterator in line 25 and increment it again in line 26. You can see that a tree accepts this valid behavior. After the increment in line 26, Litz points to the end of the list again and trying to increment it again does lead to an alarm about this invalid usage of the iterator. In case 2, we work with a map. In line 30, we use the iterator to access the second element of the map. After this operation, we erase the element that the iterator points to. This invalidates the iterator. So when the iterator is accessed again, a stray warns about the attempt to dereference a non-dereferenceable iterator. In case 3, we try to compare two iterators that point to different data structures. The result of this comparison is undefined. Therefore, a stray reports an alarm to warn about this erroneous usage of the iterators. In the last example, we work with an unordered set and have two iterators SIT and SIT2. In line 40, we perform a rehash on the unordered set and this rehash invalidates all iterators on this set. Therefore, in the next line, a tree warns about the attempt to copy the now invalid iterator SIT to SIT2. As you can see, a tree now efficiently analyzes code that uses standard library containers and finds errors in the usage of iterators. Now that we've seen all those news about a tree, let us also take a quick look at our rule checker. All MISRA 2012 rules are now covered by rule checker as well as the MISRA 2012 Amendment 1 and 2. We also enhanced the Outer C++ 14 ruleset a lot. A full list of all new checks can be found on our homepage. Also new for RuleChecker is that we now have a Kyle Microvision plugin available. Here you can find the link to the instruction video. The last thing I'm going to show to you today is that the server is now able to reject client connections from remote hosts. This operation can either be set via the command line minus minus block remote connections or by activating the option in the section network of the management tab of the server controller. We're now at the end of our video for the release 2104. As always, we cannot list and show all news of Austrian rule checker, since this would exceed the range of this video. If you want to see the complete list of changes or have some questions, please visit our website www.absint.com or write an email to info at absint.com.